Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much, Professor Nadia, for nice introduction. I am humbled by your nice words. And uh, thank you very much for the whole organization committee of this conference for providing this opportunity to talk. Today, the, my talk is focused only on pharmacological management of vitiligo. And vitiligo, you are all aware, is a disease required for implementation disorder in which white patches are formed over different body areas. Before planning the treatment of a patient of vitiligo, It's very important to take the relevant history of a patient of vitiligo, especially age at onset of lesions, rate of progression, whether the disease at the moment is active, progressive, or stable. And previous history of spontaneous repigmentation is there or not. Is there obvious is there and the various triggers for this vitiligo, like emotional stress and cognitization. Similarly, current medication that the patient is taking, type of medication and duration of previous treatment, occupation, any exposure to chemicals because certain uh, chemicals can also lead to leukodermal. Then history of autoimmune disorders, personal and family history, especially thyroid status. And in any case of any type of vitiligo, it's important to advise thyroid tests, that is D4, TSH, and antibodies. Then after taking relevant history, it's important to assess the disease activity. Then there is certain uh, indicators of the activity of the disease, like for fatty light pigmentation, Fatty light depigmentation, if you see around the patch of vitiligo, small punctate white patches, this is sign of activity. Then, cognitive phenomena, in which the patient at the time sites of scratching the trauma, linear depigmented streaks may appear, and hypochromic area of the borders, where at the border of the vitiligo, there is hypopigmentation, and then there is normal color. So if you see in a patient of vitiligo these signs and inflammatory ring that is reddish ring around the vitiligo, then this means the disease is active. So this needs more dynamic management. A more elaborate presentation of uh, signs of activity on fertilized pigmentation, whether these are less, grade one, grade two, grade three. Similarly, cognitive phenomena is different grades and hypochromic borders and how many beings are having hypochromic borders. Now you see this is a patient of vitiligo and you can easily appreciate there are many numerous depigmented small concave regions around this. So this means this is 
a sign of activity. The disease is very active. And also you can appreciate between the normal skin and the depigmented layers, there is also hypochromic border. So two signs of activity of disease are present in this patient. Then this picture shows permanent phenomenon. This again shows that your disease is active. When, when a patient presents to you, it's important to differentiate, to classify whether the disease is stable. When the known new regions are present in the last 12 months, and progressive it like go when new regions are developing in the last 12 months. And rapidly progressive is a abrupt deterioration in developing new regions or increase in size of old regions. And regressive and spontaneous repigmentation of pre existing blindness regions. So we must categorize the patient whether this is stable, progressive, rapidly progressive, or regressive. So pharmacological treatment will depends upon the activity of the disease and its types. Now first we will discuss the measurement of rapidly progressive decline. And the sign is there. Within the last three months, the patient develops environment in the genus and completely like depigmentation around the main ear. What is rapidly progressive with LIGO? When a large number of new spots and or significant enlargement of existing lions have appeared over the last three months. So when a patient presents with LIGO, ask from the patient his history that whether the patient has developed rapid progression of the lions over the last three months. If this is there, then this is rapidly progressive with LIGO. And so, when we classify that this patient is a case of rapidly progressive with LIGO, then there is a place of systemic cortic, leukocorticoids. Otherwise, in instable with LIGO, systemic leukocorticoids are not indicated. So this is a place where we can use systemic leukocorticoids. And the most commonly used therapy is oral mimicus therapy, where betamethasone or dexamethasone is given, in high doses intermittently. Like betamethasone is used 5 to 7.5 milligram for two consecutive days, like on Saturdays and Sundays per week for three to six months. Or dexamethasone 2.5 to 10 milligram for two consecutive days, I usually decide it on Saturdays and Sundays for three to six months. The other way of giving glucocorticoids in this type of vitiligo is daily oral low dose therapy. 0.3 mg per kg per day, taken once daily for two months. Thus, daily dosage leads to more side effects as compared to mini pulse therapy. In the high dose pulse therapy, high dose IV with high prednisone on three consecutive days per month. And then IM Primacilurone can be used in a single administration repeated 4 to 6 weekly for a maximum of 3 injections. So these are the various strategies which can be used only when a patient we classify is a case of rapidly progressive which like. And the most commonly therapy which is used is oral vinipulse therapy. Then along with systemic steroids, Phototherapy, narrow band UVB therapy, also helps to halt the disease progression and to stabilize the rapidly progressive with life. Then systemic immunosuppression have a limited role. These are used only in few patients in studies with active with LIGO as an alternative to systemic steroids, which includes azathioprine, cyclosporine, methotexate, mycophenolate, morphine. Then after the management of rapidly progressive vitiligo, I would like to talk on non-segmental vitiligo, which may be generalized, like in this patient, it is involving more than two body areas, and symmetrical and bilateral. So we will discuss the management of non-segmental vitiligo. Now, if it involves less than 10% body surface area, then it may be localized disease. When it is limited only to one to two areas, 
then topical corticosteroids, topical calcineurin inhibitors, and topical roxazetine, which has been recently um, available in uh, Europe, but not available in Pakistan. Then in disseminated disease, nanomet UV therapy, and in calcitin disease, you can use targeted phototherapy, that is excitement level, or autologous grafting procedure. Topical corticosteroid, there are certain important points to keep in mind while administering topical corticosteroids to patients of vitiligo. Topical corticosteroids monotherapy is first line treatment for localized extrafacial vitiligo. So if it is a limited vitiligo over hands or arms or trunk or body, then topical corticosteroids. And mid to high potency topical steroids, class 3 and 4, can be applied once daily over face. But this is not the first line over face. First line over face is topical calcium urine inhibitors. Agents with negligible local or systolic side effects, such as rheumatoid curate, is preferred. And a wide use of topical corticosteroids in periocular areas around the eyes. And superpotent steroids for trunk and extremity lesions can be used. To minimize the side effects of topical corticosteroids, schedules of intermittent therapy have been proposed. That is five days a week, two days off, then one week on and one week off, and two weeks on and two weeks off, three weeks off, on and one week off. So these are different regimens of prescribing topical corticosteroids to reduce the incidence of side effects. And if no repigmentation is observed after three months, this treatment should be interrupted and plan some other treatment. It should be remembered that chronic use of topical corticosteroids can induce tolerance and tactic paralysis. So intermittent use is better. Then topical calcium urine inhibitors, topical tecrolimus 0.03% in children and 0.1% in adults is preferred option for limited bit LIGO on face, especially periocular region, genitals and fractures. So if the patient presents to you with lesions over the face, fractures and genitals, the so topical calcium urine is 0.03% in children and 0.1% in the first line treatment. It is generally applied twice daily, can be combined with topical corticosteroids for first one month or two only, applying each once daily. These are not associated with increased risk of cutaneous or systemic malignancies. So there was an apprehension that 